This is AutoLine Daily, reporting on the global automotive industry. Well, here's an interesting development. Nissan just granted Renault a seat on its audit committee and another seat on its nomination committee for its board of directors. Now, this doesn't resolve all the differences between Renault and Nissan, but it does remove one area of contention. Meanwhile, Bloomberg reports, the Japanese government played a key role behind the scenes to torpedo the proposed merger of Renault and Fiat Chrysler. The Japanese government complained to the French government because it thought Nissan would lose even more power in a merger involving FCA. That's when the French government voted to delay any vote of the merger, which is what prompted FCA to yank the deal off the table. Now the question is, whether FCA will try to make another run at this. After all, if Nissan and Renault are finding common ground, that may create an atmosphere that's more conducive to expanding the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance. And now we know for sure Carlos Ghosn is not going to play any role whatsoever in the alliance that he played such a big role in creating. Mitsubishi just voted to remove Ghosn as its chairman. Gowen is currently free on bail in Japan and preparing for his trial, in which he stands accused of financial improprieties while he was CEO of Nissan, something he vehemently denies. Say, would you buy a used electric car? Merrill Lynch just did a survey of car buyers around the world and it shows they're very leery about used EVs. Over 80% of respondents said they were unsure or would absolutely not buy a used electric. They're worried about battery degradation, reliability, and poor resale value. Merrill Lynch says designing a system to support prices of used EVs is going to be critical to getting those sales going. China wants one out of every five cars sold in the country to be an electric by 2025, but it's struggling to meet those targets. However, 48 volt technology could help. We're not talking about 48 volt mild hybrid systems, but rather an all electric 48 volt powertrain. The setup would be fitted in small city cars that have limited range and speed, The supplier Vallejo showed a vehicle like this at the Shanghai Auto Show that can go 62 miles an hour, has a range of 93 miles, and would cost less than $10,000. That's the advantage of this 48-volt system. It's cheap. The Chinese government may regulate specifications for 48-volt EVs by footprint and power output, kind of like Japan and its K-cars. And Vallejo thinks that by 2023, as many as 4 million cars in China could be outfitted with that technology. And here's a technology that could breathe longer life into the internal combustion engine. A California startup has developed a fast pulse, low temperature plasma ignition system. Instead of using sparks from a spark plug to ignite the gasoline in the cylinders of an engine, it uses plasma, which is an electrically charged gas. The company is called Transient Plasma Systems, and the key to its system are the fast pulses, low temperature, and low energy. It can be used with any engine with no modifications. In fact, the plasma injectors fit exactly where the spark plugs go. The company says it can improve fuel efficiency 10% and reduce NOx emissions 50%, on the EPA test cycle known as FTP-75. It also helps engines develop 45% thermal efficiency. The technology is still under development, but transient plasma systems is getting a lot of interest from automakers, the military, and the aerospace industry. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion and by DuPont, transforming industries and improving lives through material science. Many drivers find parallel parking to be very intimidating. 
Ford for years has been removing that fear with its park assist feature, and the all-new Explorer is the first vehicle in the U.S. to get the next generation of that system, which is even easier to use. We got a demonstration of the system, and let's start with it exiting a parking spot. First thing we do is press the exit park assist button, and since we're parked, it defaults to parallel park out assist. Use the turn signal to select the side that we want to exit the parking space to. Then we follow the on-screen instructions to let go of the steering wheel, shift to neutral, take our foot off the brake, and then we press and hold the active park assist button. And the system will take over steering, throttle, braking, and changing gears for the customer and get them on a path to exit the parking space going forward in one move. Next, we're going to look at reverse brake assist, which takes our current rear park aid and cross traffic alert features to another level and not only warns the customer, but will actively stop the vehicle if the driver doesn't hear or is distracted when the warnings occur. So for parallel parking, again it's pressing the active park assist button to let the vehicle know that we would like to park the vehicle. And so it's, it's now searching for a parking space that's large enough for our vehicle to park into. And once it identifies a space that's large enough for the vehicle, will give us instructions to bring it to a stop, let go of the steering wheel, shift to neutral, release the brakes, and now again we can press and hold the button, and hands are off the wheel, and feet are off the brakes throttle. big change is that the driver no longer has to shift and control the brake and throttle while the maneuver is taking place. They just have to hold down the button. And we'll have more about the all-new Explorer in an upcoming episode. But anyway, that wraps up this week's worth of shows. Thank you for making AutoLine Daily a part of your day. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.